I still have joy. <clears throat> I still have joy. It's one of my favorite songs, y'all. <clears throat> I still have joy. <clears throat> I still have joy, I still have joy, after all the things I've been through, I still have joy, you know I still have joy, I still have joy, after all the things I've been through. I still have joy. One more time. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. I still have peace. I still have peace. I still have peace. After all the things I've been through, I still have peace. One more time. I still have peace. That's right. I still have peace. After all the things I've been through, I still have peace, still have love. I still have love. I still have love. After all the things we've been through, I still have love. You know he's brought me out. That's right, he's brought me out. After all the things I've been through, he's brought me out. You know my God me out. Yes, right, he's brought me out. After all the things I've been through, he's brought me out. That's why I still have joy. I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. You know I still have joy. I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. He's been so good. He's been so He's been so good. After all the things I've been through, he's been so good. You know he's been so good. That's right, he's been so good. After all the things we've been through, he's been so good. That's why I still have joy. Oh, yes, I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. You know I still have joy. Oh, yes, I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. Amen. Shall we all stand for the reading of the Lord's Word? Today's scripture is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. That is Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And it reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. May the Lord have the blessings for the readers here as endures of his word, as together we remain for prayer. Good morning, Metro. Good morning. Let's, uh, let's uh, go to the throne of grace together. Heavenly Father, we come before you, O God, as one people, O God, just thanking you, Lord, for this beautiful, beautiful day that you've created here in Indianapolis and for giving all of us life and health and strength, O God. We acknowledge you, O God. You are the great one. You're the king. You're the almighty. We love you and we worship you, O God. And Lord, we honor you this day, O God. And Lord, we want to draw closer and closer to you, O God. 
for your praise and for your glory, O oh God. Teach us, O oh God. Yeah. How to please you, O oh God. Yeah. Teach us, O oh God, your yeah. way of love yeah. and oh, mercy, O oh God. Oh God. Help us, O oh God, to do that thing which is right yeah. and pleasing in your sight, O oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, we desire to acknowledge you, O oh God, yeah. in all of our ways, O oh God. Oh, yeah. We do acknowledge you, O oh God, and we want your direction. Yeah. We want your presence, O oh God. Yeah. Teach us, O oh God, how to enjoy our lives yeah. and put you first. Each and every one of us, oh God. Yes. Lord, forgive us for all of our sins and shortcomings and, and, and everything, oh God. Lord, you know what's going on in our hearts yes. and our minds, oh God. Lord, we ask you to help us to love one another, oh God. Yes. Yes. And Lord, let us be effective witnesses, oh yes. God, for your praise and for your glory, oh God. Yes. Lord, feel this house, oh God. Yes. This house that you have created and yes. built yes. here in Indianapolis, oh God, yes. where your name is, oh God. Yes. This is a place where your name is, Lord. Yes. Lord, bring in worshipers, oh God. Yes. Bring in workers, oh God. Yes. Bring in believers, oh God, yes. that your work may be done, oh God, yes. and empower and enrich each of us, oh God, that's here even right now, oh God. Yes. Give us insight, oh God, how to win souls. Yes. Help us to be wise, oh God. Yes. Help us, oh God. Yes. Teach us how to allow our lights to shine, yes. oh God. Yes. And Lord, give us the holy boldness that we need, oh God, oh. and the words that we need, oh God, to yes. speak, to win these souls for you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Metro Church, oh God, and for all the, the well-wishers and supporters, oh God. Lord, we pray a blessing, oh God, over each and every one that's here. Lord, give them a special blessing, oh God, and those whose hearts and minds are here as well, but their bodies are not. We pray for them also, oh God. We intercede for them, oh God, for healing, oh God, and for deliverance, oh God. Lord, let there be prosperity, oh God, among this people, oh God. And, Lord, enrich the lives of the people, oh God, and the marriages, oh God, and the children, oh God, with good jobs, oh God. And, Lord, insight, oh God. Help us, oh God, to be merciful and kind oh one to another, yeah. God. We love you and we glorify you, God. We glorify you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for the city of Indianapolis. Yeah. Lord, we pray a prayer of protection yeah. over the citizens yeah. in Indianapolis, oh God. Lord, we speak the word of peace and, and love, oh God. Yeah. And we rebuke fear and anger and hatred, oh God, yeah. in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we just love you and we glorify you. Yeah. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this word that's coming forth today, oh God, from the man of God. Encourage him, O oh God. Yeah. Let him preach that word, O oh God, as you yeah. give it to him, O oh God. Lord, just give him that strength, O oh God. Let him yeah. rejoice in his gift, O oh God. Yeah. And help each and every one of us, O oh God, whether we're here live in person yeah. or watching yeah. via the airwaves, O oh God. Help all of us, O oh God, receive the oh, word God. that is for yeah. us, O oh God. Yeah. And help us to digest it and grow healthy in yeah. you, Lord. Yeah. Help us to be focused on you, O oh God, to give you the attention yeah. and the glory. Yeah. Lord, we won't put nothing in front of you or before you. In the yeah. name of Jesus amen. Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Bless you, Let's go to our supplement book. We're going to do a hard fighting soldiers before our man servant come before us. <clears throat> Just thinking about the song, hard fighting soldiers on the battlefield. <clears throat> Can't give up on the fight. <laughs> I'm, I can remember my mama telling me <laughs> back in the day, don't run. If you run, you're going to always be running. <laughs> so, uh, I never ran then, so we can't run in this fight right now, even though it's two different types of fights. <laughs> but I remember that, and she told me that. I said, well, if she tell me that, it's got to be some uh, good, good message to give me, <laughs> some truth to that, like you said. Hard-fighting soldiers. I'm a hard-fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. I'm a hard-fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. And I'm a hard-fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I 
give cause I'm a hard fighting soldier and we're on the battlefield I'm a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield and I'm a hard fighting soldier and we're on the battlefield I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give and I've got a helmet on my head and in my hand a sword and shield I've got a helmet on my head and in my hand and a sword and shield and I've got a helmet on my head and in my hand a sword and shield I keep on bringing so to Jesus by the service that I give cause I'm a hard fighting so Hoosier and we're on the battlefield I'm a hard fighting so Hoosier and we're on the battlefield and I'm a hard fighting soldier and we're on the battlefield I keep on so to Jesus by the service that I give and Lord let me walk right and talk right and sing right pray right on the battlefield Lord let me walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right on this battlefield and Lord let me walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right on the battlefield, I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. Cause I'm a hard fighting soldier and we're on the battlefield. I'm a hard fighting soldier and we're on the battlefield and I'm a hard fighting soldier. And we're on the battlefield. I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give. Cause I'm a hard fighting soldier. And we're on the battlefield. I'm a hard fighting soldier. And we're on this battlefield. And I'm a hard fighting being soldier and I'm on the battlefield I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give amen amen, amen. let us all say amen. amen do we have any hard fighting soldiers in here amen. Uh, if you're a child of God you're trying to do what's right. You are definitely a, a hard-fighting soldier because it is, a, it is a, a challenge that Satan is going to see to it that we, we endure. Amen, somebody? Amen. It's good to be here this morning. Glad to be in the house of God. Good to be in the presence of God's people. God has been good unto all of us. He has kept us once again as we laid down last night and he watched over us and he allowed us to rise this morning with a proper functioning of our minds and limbs and, and all of that good stuff and having a desire to come out and worship God, you know. You count that a blessing that you have a desire to come out and worship God. It's so many people have no desire to come out and worship God. They have no desire whatsoever, not realizing that it's in him we live, we move, we have our very being. And if it were not for God, none of us would be here. But because of his goodness and his grace and his divine mercy, we're still here. Uh, some people may call you, you know, that you're arrogant in your walk, you're arrogant in your speech. It's not that. It's just that I know who I am. I know from whence I came. I know what I used to be, and I know what I am now, and I'm just happy, and I'm just proud. So guess what? I, I walk like the son of a king. I walk with my head up and not with my head down because everything that I need is up above my head. And so we, we think like that. We that we talk like that. I got a mic that's fading on me, brother, so y'all might want to change me out early. I don't know. I don't want to be breaking up on the, in the middle of anything, so I don't know whether that's one is hot and is good. I got the blue one, so 
Love Brother Bishop Vic. Thank you so much, sir. I never lost a beat. I need some more. There we go. We didn't never lost a beat. That was a testing, y'all. That was a testing right there. <laughs> yeah, we're so grateful and thankful this morning for the a reading of the scripture by Brother Brian Webb. We appreciate him so much. Amen. How he eloquently read into the, our hearing the word of God this morning. We're so thankful uh, also this morning for uh, Dr. Cash, how he went to the throne of grace on our behalf. And, and then we had uh, leading us in songs and hymns, our very own, the maestro, Brother Jeffrey James, Deacon James, uh, leading us in songs and hymns. He said he was told never to run, you know. I was told never to run unless the odds was against me. And so my, my daddy always told me a good run is better than a good beat up. So I, you know, I took that to heart. I know, so, but I ain't running with Jesus. I ain't running from Jesus. I'm running to Jesus. We appreciate Brother Jeff and all of you all. And so those of you that are visiting, good to see, good, good to see you, Sister Jane. Good to see you out there and, 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 and good to have you. Appreciate your presence and all of you that are here. You all got your Bibles this morning. Y'all got your Bibles How's your week been? I hope you've had a blessed week. I hope everything has been well. Everybody that's visiting with us, we want you to know you are God's honored guest, and we're just pleased as punch to have you here. And I just want you to know, if y'all smile at me every now and then, I'll hurry. If y'all just smile at me every now and then, y'all, I'll, I'll hurry and get through this lesson, you know. Because uh, when you don't smile at me, I think I got to push a little harder, Mama G. So I said, they ain't getting it. That's why they ain't smiling. So, so if you smile at me, I'll... I'll yeah. Y'all smiling over here. Look at that. Look at that. What a blessing. Sister D-Cash smiling. She's saying, hurry. <laughs> over here, y'all. I, I see. I, even through your mask, I see your teeth. Boy, what a blessing. Boy, I tell you. God is good. God is good. God is good. Uh, let me get to my lesson. We, we only want three passages of scripture this morning. Just three passages. Y'all going to help me, right? Let's look back at this thing again. Let's look back at this thing again. Not, I'm going to talk about it first, and then I'm going to preach the lesson. The Hebrew writer, that is not, there's not a name given. Many uh, scholars believe that it is written by the great apostle Paul because of the way it is written, but it does not give us the name as most authors do in the books. We have uh, all the other books in the Bible, and it gives us a descriptive name of who it was that written it. However, uh, many believe that this book was written to the Jews uh, because of the way that it was written, but it was also written, we know, as well as to the Gentiles, and we know as the church, we have to take it for what it is. However, the writer does something in this particular book here. Uh, the writer gives us a <clears throat> uh, outline, a catalog, category, uh, or, or catalog, if you will, uh, in chapter 11 of all of what we call the Hall of Fame of Faith, uh, all of those that have gone on and how their faith uh, was proven and their faith was tried, but yet they were triumphant uh, in their uh, endeavors to please the Almighty God. And so when we get to chapter 12, he says, wherefore. And we know that wherefore means that whatever I'm about to tell you now, you need to take heed, stop, look, listen, and pay attention because I'm about to drop some heavy stuff on you. So he says, wherefore in verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. In other words, we have someone that has made it that is watching us. Uh, you, you, you're not, in other words, it, 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 you, you, you're, not, you're not, this is not new. Uh, this is old because others have done it. And, and, and if I just inject this thought, and because they've done it and been successful, that means, or it implies, or it infers that we can too. Amen. You, 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 you know, in your COVID thing, they say we can do this when you get your shot. We can do this. And, and so he says, we are compassed by with such a great cloud of witness. Somebody is watching us, and he gives us instruction. Uh, he says, let us, I like the us because that's in general, that's the, we as the children of God and those that have not gotten to the race need to get in the race. He said, let us, let us do what? He says, let us lay aside. You, you, you got to put some stuff aside. You got to put some uh, people aside. You got to put some old habits aside you got to put some old thoughts 
aside. He said, let us lay aside what? He says, let us lay aside not some. I'm, I'm just walking through this before I preach it. He said, let us lay aside uh, uh, every weight, uh, everything that could be cumbersome or everything that could be a hindrance, lay it aside. And then he says, he says, and, and the sin, you know, there's some stuff that can keep us from being effective in our race. It's not a sin, but he said we lay aside all of that weight and all of the sin because sin does what? It easily besets us. So once we've done away with that, he said, and then he has a conjunction, he said, and, and, and let us run. He didn't say walk. He didn't say go jogging. <laughs> he said, let us run. Now, you know, when you're running, you got to put something in it. Y'all do know that, right? He said, let us run. But we have to run with patience uh, because you won't get to the end just like that. He says, let us run with patience. What are we running? The race that has been set before us. God has set a race before each and every one of us individually as well as collectively good god almighty i didn't even put this in my lesson but 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 it's a race that that that, that i can't run for you and it's a race that you can't run for me it, it's a race that everybody has to run for themselves am i right about it and then he says uh when we run this race that god has put there he says listen we need some blinders on. You know, I used to wonder why they put blinders on horses. Uh, 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 because I love horses. As a youngster, I used to go to camp and I would ride horses. And the horses would have blinders. And I used to ask why would they put uh, uh, blinders on the horse. And so one of the trainers, they said they put blinders on the horse so certain things wouldn't disturb them. And they would be able to maintain their focus. And so he says, now in order to maintain that, he said, here's what we have to do. We have to look unto Jesus, the author. Now, when you say author, that means what? He's the writer of the script. He's the one that designed, that, that, that designed the path. He's the one that laid it out for us. He said, looking unto Jesus, who is the author of, but not only is he the author of the beginning, but he is the finisher. Uh, 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 and so we're not done until he says it's done of our faith. Now, he says, I want you to take a closer look that when you look at him, I want you to look at him in another perspective. He says, who is the author and finisher of our faith? Who for the joy, in other words, we go through nothing down here that Jesus, and, that Jesus hasn't gone through. We experience nothing down here that Jesus doesn't know about. I came by to tell you, everybody in here, whatever you experience, whatever you're going through when you're a child of God, you don't have to go through it all by yourself because the Lord already know. Been there, done that. He said, he said, for the joy that was set. See, he had to run a race too. Who was set uh, uh, before him. But what did he do? He endured. See, his, his race required a cross. Y'all still here? His race required a cross that he had to bear, that he had to endure, that he knew about before he even got in the race. He, he endured. The Bible says that he endured the cross, despising the shame. And what happened when he finished? He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
it, which, 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 which begs me to raise the question, where do you want to be when the race is over? Uh, where do you want to be when the race is over? Uh, where, where do you want your seat to be? Because there's some hot seats. But then there's some good seats. And, and so what he points out here as we look at, he says, he says in verse 3, he says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. I, I, I just got a simple subject that I want to share with us today, and I want you all to embrace that and go with me to the throne of grace in prayer at this time. Father in heaven, we humble ourselves under your mighty throne of grace. We're so thankful that you allowed us to be here. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now sat down at the right hand of the Father. We thank you for every trial, every tribulation, every challenge that we experience. We thank you for each and every person that is here to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask you to allow the power of your presence to manifest itself today. And Father, as we hear your word, that we will be moved by it in such a way that it will draw us closer unto you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for our eternal salvation as we submit this prayer. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> Paul here. If you will, we began to look at uh, verses number one. We find in this particular text, as I already shared some information with you, it, it tells us to, to let us. And this let us may be used to refer to those, as I stated, the Jews who had made a profession of Christ but had not gone all the way with full faith. See, sometimes it's easy to enter into something and start off well, but then we don't complete that which we've started with. And so... If you're here today, I want you to understand, I want you to know that if you're here and you're not a child of God, you need to get in the race. You need to engage in this Christian race here. Get in the race because you have to enter before you can even begin to hope to win. See, you can't win if you don't play. And so you got to get in this race in order to win this race. And so the encouragement to the Christians, if you will, is to run, not only to run, but to run with endurance. In other words, don't give up. No matter what comes your way in life, don't you dare give up. We understand and we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that life has a tendency to knock you down. And what knocks you down oftentimes is because we have an adversary who sets up things to entrap us, to take us and off and lose our focus or to impede our progress or just to throw up our hands and just say quit. However, the writer here gives us encouragement to let us know that whatever we do, don't give up because this race is a race worth running. This race is a race which we must all endure at some point in time. And I need us to know and I need us to understand that there are many Christians who are not uh, described as running this race. As I said, some people that have said they've entered into the race, they're jogging. They're not running, but they're jogging along. Some people are on a speed walk, but you can't win this race <clears throat> in a speed walk. Some Christians here are not even doing anything. They're sitting down. They're just lying down or they're just watching others while they run this race. But I came by to let you know that the course that we're on has been set as a child of God. Amen. Somebody, I need you to know and understand that the biblical standard for holy living is a race. This race uh, is unto the final end. This race is not something to start, to stop, and to get off at any given point and any given time. But this race is given unto us that we must run it <clears throat> even until the end. I need you to know that this word here, race, uh, is the Greek word for agon from which we get agony. In other words, there's some agony in this particular race. You're going to have and you're going to experience some agony in this race. But right now, I need to know, is there anybody in here that's been in this Christian race that have had some difficulties, that have had some hard times, that have had some struggles, that have had some ups, and that have had some doubts? Is there anybody in here ever felt like I'm tired of running in this race where the devil just had you like, why run? Every time I try to run, I get knocked back down. 
down? Why run because somebody always gets in my way? Why run because it seems like I'm gaining no ground? Well, I came by to tell you, don't give up. Don't stop just because your life gets hard or it gets difficult. Uh, if we never had any difficulties, if we never had any hard times in this particular race, we would never gain any real spiritual strength that we need to endure until the end. I heard Solomon, the wise man, say in the book of Solomon uh, 9 and 11, the race is not given to the swift, but it's given to the one that will endure to the end. My question unto you this morning is, will you endure unto the end? Because God has set the course. We don't know what the course actually is, but we do know that in this particular course, as a child of God, we are going to have some ups, and we are going to have some downs, and we know that we must enter into the kingdom of God through much tribulation. You got to go through something in order to get where God wants you to be. I came by to tell you, you've heard this story before. You can't get a crown uh, if you don't have any thorns. Uh, you can't get a flower or a rose if you don't get any thorns. You got to go through something in this thing called life. And the Bible tells us as children of God that we got to endure whatever it is that is put in front of us. There's not always an exit to get off of what God has put an exit. But Satan will put an exit door there for you to get off ramp uh, and get lost out there where God is saying don't focus uh, on the exit. Don't focus uh, on what's around you. Don't even focus on the people that's around you. Keep your eyes focused uh, on the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to know this morning as I use for a subject, have you considered Jesus? Uh, because when you consider Jesus, you'll look at the fact and know that he could have gave up because nobody had a race to run like Jesus. Uh, he ran against opposition from the day he was born. Uh, he was born in Bethlehem, uh, but they tried to get him. He had to go to Nazareth uh, and grow up there in Nazareth. Uh, when he confounded the minds uh, of the lawyers and the doctors uh, at 12 years old, he fought with Pharisees. Uh, he fought with scribes. Uh, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He killed the lepers. Uh, and not only that, he gave sight to the blind, but still there was an opposing force of the people who denounced the fact of who he is. I came by to tell you that in this thing called life, uh, when you face opposition, uh, when you face opposition after opposition, it's not a time for you to give up. It's time for you to double down and say, guess what? Uh, I can do all things uh, through Christ Jesus. Why? Because my focus uh, is not on what's going on down here, but my focus is on the finish line. Uh, and when I think about what Jesus had to go through, it's a small thing for me to endure these little things that I got to go through down here. So we need to first of all realize and understand that the course has been set. And because the course has been set and you and I didn't have anything to do with the course being set, it has nothing for us to do but to run this course. See, see every now and then, when you're on this course, you're going to have some tragedies. You're going to have some traumas. You're going to have some trials. You're going to have some tribulations. You're going to have some fake friends. You're going to have some things that's not going to come the way that you like for them to come. You're going to have some things that's not going to happen like you planned them to happen. But I came by to tell you, don't quit. You keep on running. You, 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 you just keep on running. You, you run because you understand that the biblical standard for us is a holy living. And it's a race not only a, uh, for a short while, but it's a race to the end. The Christian race, in other words, uh, that you and I are in. Uh, I wish I had some real people in here that could talk back to me. Uh, if you lived any time uh, and you've had to go through anything in life. Uh, as a child of God, uh, you can testify to the fact that this race is demanding. Brother Brooke, what do you mean? It's demanding. Sometimes you don't feel like running, but you gotta run anyhow. Sometimes you don't feel like being nice to folk that ain't been nice to you, but you gotta do it anyhow. Sometimes it's hard to love folk who have treated you worse than good, but you gotta love them anyhow. Sometimes you wanna say some things, but you can't say what you wanna say cause you're in this divine race. Sometimes you wanna act ugly, but you can't get ugly because because you're in this divine race. God 
has set the race for you to endure certain things that you got to go through. Uh, Sometimes life uh, will push your face down uh, against the pillow and you don't want to get up and open up the blinds. Uh, but because God uh, has opened up uh, the way and set the course for us, we got to get up uh, and keep on moving. Uh, Sometimes sickness uh, will invade your body uh, and the doctor will tell you uh, that there ain't no hope. Uh, I can't do nothing for you, but you got to run this race anyhow. You say, if the Lord brought me to it, I know through faith the Lord can bring me through it. Uh, I'm going to run uh, until I can't run no more. Uh, and even when your body uh, gets weak, uh, it gets feeble, uh, and you can't do what you used to do, you get up early in the morning, uh, and your cousin Arthur has visited in your leg. Uh, you get up early in the morning, uh, and your blood pressure is high. Uh, when you get up early in the morning, uh, and your blood sugar has dropped, uh, and all you can do is lay there. You need to understand uh, it's all a part of the course, but in the midst of this course, I'm going to say thank you, sweet Jesus, because I know as long as there's breath in my body, there's hope in my body, there's help from my body, there's faith that helps me overcome and know that through it all, the Lord will be with me. I came by to tell you, we need to consider King Jesus uh, when we own this race. Uh, I read somewhere. I said I read somewhere in this book called the Bible. I thought I'd find out what somebody else had to say about this Christian race. I said, Peter, do you have a word? Because sometimes it gets lonely. Sometimes it gets long. Sometimes it gets dark. Sometimes you get weary. I said, Peter, what do you have to tell me to tell the people to encourage the people of God to continue on in this race? Peter, talk back to me. Peter said in first, second, first Peter 5 and 10, he said, and the, the God, uh, and the God of who? And the God of all grace. Uh, and the God of who? The God of all grace. Uh, in other words, when I'm deficient, when you're deficient, the God of all grace, uh, y'all going to help me somebody? I discovered a long time ago, is sufficient. Uh, I heard him tell Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, when Paul was bothered by a thorn in his flesh, uh, Paul said, Lord, take this thorn away from me. But I came by to tell you, sometime God won't take that that troubles you away from you. But what God will do, he'll give you grace uh, to keep on moving. Uh, he said, my grace is sufficient. Uh, that's why when we're deficient, we need to look to him uh, who is sufficient uh, to give us everything uh, that we need to continue on this good fight of faith. Say amen, somebody. Watch what Peter says. He said, and the grace of God of grace. What did God do? Y'all stay here with me. Peter says, who call you. He said, who, who call you to his eternal glory. When you read this book called the Bible and you see what has transpired in your life, for your life, and through your life by God, God has a purpose for all of our lives. Watch what Peter says. He says, who call you? Y'all don't mind talking back to me, do you? Who did Peter say call us? God called us. My son, when he was little, a baby, could be standing on the table. And I said, Montez, jump. And you know what he would do? If he was across on the other side of the street and there were no cars coming, but there was cars around. And I said, Montez, run. He was running, not concerned about what might be coming. He was running because guess what? 
He knew it was his daddy that called him, and he knew that if his daddy called him, everything was going to be all right. I came by to tell you, when God calls us, it doesn't matter what might get in our way. We need to understand that everything is going to be all right. So when we in this race and things come up around us, we need to understand, I don't need to stop running. I need to keep on running. But what else did Peter say? Peter said he didn't call us to something temporal. Y'all follow him in the book. He said, he, he called you to his eternal glory. How long is eternity? Is there anybody in here can tell me that they've been to eternity and back? He's called us to forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Now, he says he called us to his Eternal glory. Where is it at? Then he gives us the location. It's in Christ Jesus. Where is our eternal glory? It's in Christ Jesus. Because our eternal glory is all wrapped up in Christ Jesus, we must run this race. And we have to run it with patience. And we have to run it with our focus looking unto Jesus who is the beginner and the finisher of our faith. Am I right about it, somebody? Notice what he says here. He says, now, Peter says, now, after, not before. He says, but once we get in this race, if I can use Peter's terminology here. He says, after you have suffered for a little while. He said, after you have suffered for a, a little while. In other words, you may go through some suffering. As a matter of fact, let me make a, put a qualifier. You will go through some suffering. Because all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer some persecution. But, but he said, after you have suffered for a little while. Now, 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 now. How can you compare a little while? To eternity. You can't compare it. So, so in other words, eternity is far better and more beneficial for us than a little while. See, we can go through some stuff for a little while. If you live here to be 101 years old, you ain't been here but for a little while. Say amen, somebody. I, 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 I was watching somewhere with a, a lady that lived to be 117 or something like that. She hadn't been here but for a little while. But, 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 but it's not about our little while while we're here. It's about our eternity when we finish our race and finish the course that we spend with Jesus forever and ever. Amen, somebody. Do I have... And I'm just curious to know, do I have any, anybody in here that has ever gone through any, any godly suffering? Y'all ain't saying nothing, huh? I, I, I'm talking about some godly suffering. I, I'm talking about some stuff that you didn't bring on yourself, but just because you are a child of God, the devil saw to it that, that you would go through some stuff. And, 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 and not only that, not only that, God let you go through some stuff because your skin was too thin, and God said, I need you to have thicker skin than what you got right now, so I'm going to let you go through some stuff. I'm talking about godly suffering. I, I just need to know where I am, you know, because we need to understand that godly suffering has some benefits. Godless suffering will mature us. Godless suffering will grow you up. Yeah, it'll grow you up. A lot of us left home as young men, but the next time we went home, we were grown men. Because we got out from under the shades in the wings of mom and daddy, and we got out there on our own and had to hit it and get it. And we found out, you know what, life ain't so easy. Uh, but when you're out there on your own, you got to learn how to grow up and mature. 
Godly suffering will do that. In other words, we, we must, as Peter said, we must, uh, we must go through much tribulation on our way to the, to the heavenly kingdom and, we'll, we'll, uh, and fill up the measure of suffering which, which is allotted unto us and the veil of these tears. Uh, Hebrews 11, uh, when we begin to look at we find out that those who prove to be faithful unto death having obtained a good report. That's what I want. I want a good report. Uh, they are exhorting us in this book. Uh, the writer of Hebrews find out that in 11, and when he gets to 12, he's exhorting us from those that have gone through stuff in chapter 12 uh, to follow their example. But, but more importantly, what he's doing, he's trying to get us to see, follow the example of Jesus Christ. Uh, follow the example that Jesus Christ has set before us. Jesus Christ had the toughest path set before him than anybody else, but yet he still endured. The great God of heaven has a course marked out for us by God himself and we cannot err from the course that God has marked out for us we must stay the course we must adhere to the directions given unto us inside of the holy scripture we are not at liberty to choose the path for ourselves the race is set before us I came to tell you church and what this race does is that it requires continued exertion continued exertion many are the difficulties that obstruct our way uh, sometimes our path uh, is steep. Sometimes our path uh, is slippery. And sometimes uh, it is rough and it's even thorny. Uh, I wish I had some real church folk up in here. Uh, weariness uh, is on the course. Uh, and the way we become uh, faithful uh, it was that we have to continue on uh, in the course to finish our race. Uh, and sometimes uh, those people uh, along our course uh, that should be encouraging us uh, give us the most discouragement. Uh, but I came by to tell you, you can't be discouraged by the people uh, that do not encourage you. You got to be encouraged by the almighty God uh, who touched you with his finger of love this morning, uh, got you up out of your bed uh, and started you on your way. Uh, you got to be encouraged by the fact uh, that everything you need in life uh, is all wrapped up uh, in Jesus Christ. Uh, you got to be encouraged by the fact uh, that he didn't bring me this far to leave me. Uh, you got to be encouraged by the fact uh, that I can lean uh, on the Lord. Uh, you got to be encouraged by the fact uh, that he's never failed me yet. Uh, you got to be encouraged by the fact that uh, when I'm all alone and it looks like by my, I'm by myself, uh, there goes God uh, standing with his opening ears uh, and his outstretched arms uh, waiting on me to cry because uh, one of these days uh, I know when it's over, God will wipe away all tears uh, from my eyes. Uh, there'll be no more pain, uh, no more sadness, uh, no more sorrow. Every day will be hello howdy howdy full of joy peace uh, and goodness in the gracious presence uh, of God almighty we must be encouraged by the fact uh, that God uh, is always present uh, God is always there uh, weariness if you will uh, is on this course uh, and we may become uh, faint uh, and half hearted uh, and want to quit uh, in this race uh, sometimes we look at this race uh, and think about uh, Lord uh, I can't do this the Lord says I know you can't do it all by yourself. Uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, that's why you have me. Uh, that's why I did it before. I did it so you can look at what I've done uh, and be encouraged that you too can accomplish uh, everything that I've set forth for you to do. Uh, Sometimes in life, I've discovered uh, when it looks like you're failing, uh, that's when you're actually winning. Uh, Sometimes it looks like uh, when you drop behind, uh, God allows you to fall back uh, in order for you to catch your breath, to pick up some speed. Uh, every now and then, when it looks like the world has shut a door, God said, yes, uh, I shut that door because uh, that's not the door I want for you. I got another door. I got a bigger door. I got a better door. I got a more blessed that's the door. You just keep on running uh, in this race. Uh, sometime, uh, church, in this race, you look around and say, so-and-so uh, ain't here no more. So-and-so didn't show up no more. So-and-so uh, ain't singing. Uh, So-and-so ain't praying. Uh, So-and-so ain't working in the service no more. Don't you worry about so-and-so. You keep your eyes focused uh, on the master who called you to run this particular race because in the end, you're going to get a crown. The fate is not away. So run. Run. Run until the Lord calls you home. Run until you can't run no more. 
When others ask you why you're doing it, you tell them how you're doing it. I'm doing it because the Lord has empowered me. It ain't about the why. It's all about the who. Jesus put me on this course, and I'm going to run this course because he put me on it. At one time in life, I didn't know you. You didn't know me. But some way, somehow, God brought us together. And hopefully and prayerfully, he brought us together for the good. But if it ain't working out for the good uh, on my spiritual behalf, I'm sorry, but I got to race. I got to run. I got to keep on running. You got to leave some stuff and keep on running for the Lord. Am I right about it? Came to tell you that despite all our external trials, our inward weaknesses, and we all have them, it is by patience. Continuous in the well-doing to seek for the glory and honor of the almighty God. It's all about us running and enduring until the end. Uh, if our goal is to be saved by Jesus Christ, uh, when we consider such a great cloud of witnesses who has gone on before us, we should encourage, uh, be encouraged and motivated to, to give it our all. Uh, I, I remember when I used to run uh, in corporate Olympics, uh, I, I was running a, a, a track in corporate Olympics, uh, and, 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 and I was a little bit older then. Uh, and, and, and so when I was a little bit older, they, they didn't know. My wife didn't know. My son didn't know that I still had some get up uh, and some go about me. And so they were just saying, you're you going to run in that, that, that corporate Olympics. But, but, but what we had to do, Brother Tony, was that we had to, we had to practice. And so I, I was the oldest guy out there. But, but just because you got a number in age don't mean that you got a number in your spirit uh, because you are what you think you are. Amen, somebody. And so, so they, they finally had the, the meat for everybody. And so they had to line us up. We were running in the, the relay. And so uh, they, they, they set us up and they said, well, we don't want you to run the, the first leg. We don't want you to run the third leg. We don't want you to run the fourth leg. We need you to run the second leg because if you run the second leg, we know that based on what we've seen out here, doing practice uh, that you can give us some leeway uh, to help us win this particular race. Uh, well, I understand that there's four of us uh, that are out here competing against these other four groups, uh, uh, companies, amen, somebody? But but all I have to do is just remember that that my thing is to run uh, and to run uh, to win. And my thing is to run and to make sure that I outrun the guy that's next to me. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. My, my, my responsibility is to run and make sure that when I stick, I stick it in the hand uh, of the third runner and so while we were running uh, I, uh, the guy came around the corner I mean he was laying it down uh, he was laying it down in that curve uh, I looked back uh, and he was running up on me and he said stick you know because you need to be moving a little bit when they get you anyway so when he said stick I was moving when he put it in my hand and I felt it there I took off uh, when I took off I heard my, my wife and my son run dad run dad run dad and when I heard them saying run dad run dad because they didn't think I could run you know what that did it put air up under my wings. I, I took off. Uh, and when I took off, uh, the guy that was in front of me, I'm telling the truth, y'all. The guy that was in front of me, he said he looked back. He looked back and he saw me back there. When he looked back again, uh, I was standing on top of him. He hadn't even took off. Uh, he said, man, you came up on me so fast. Uh, I didn't even know you were there. I came by to tell you, life sometimes uh, will come up on us so fast uh, that we don't even know that it's there. That's why we got to always be in motion running for the Lord. You can't stop. You can't afford to stop. But I came by to let you know is that when you have people cheering you on. Church, can I drop this? Every member of the body of Christ I don't care what you do. I don't care if your role seems to be insignificant. If you feel like, well, I'm really not important. You are important to Christ. <clears throat> and you need encouragement. Just like all the rest of us need encouragement. All of us ought to be encouraging and must be encouraging one another to keep on running. Keep on running. We are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. And they are telling us, keep running. Don't stop running. Keep running. It doesn't matter what comes up. You just keep on running. Y'all remember, y'all remember Forrest Gump. This ain't even in my lesson, but I thought it'd be practical. Remember when Forrest 
broke out of those braces. What did they tell Forrest? What did his girlfriend tell him? What did, what did she do? She said, who? Run who? The situation there was that somebody was chasing after Forrest. But if you notice, she did not say, run, y'all, run. <clears throat> she was specific. She said, run. God is telling you, run. Sammy, run. Abraham is telling you, run. Cash, run. Sarah's telling you, Sister Cash, run. Dee Dee, run. Miss Julia, I came by to tell you. Mary's telling you, run. Miss Julia, run. I came to tell you, fish back. Paul is telling you to run. Fish back, run. We have a cloud of witnesses that are telling us to run. But more importantly, I hear the voice of my sweet Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, say, run, son, run. This is your beloved Lord and Savior. You can do this. I endured the cross, despising the shame. I made it possible for you to run and to run all the way until the end. We need to keep on running. For the Lord, am I right about it? Somebody, uh, we need to get rid of everything uh, that will cause us to lose uh, our focus. Uh, we have to stay focused. My second point, uh, we must direct our eyes uh, to Jesus Christ uh, and consider him. Uh, what must we do? Direct our eyes uh, unto Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, uh, consider him. In verse number three, uh, Jesus uh, is our successful pattern uh, and our almighty friend. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, no other has ever faced a more difficult uh, course uh, that to run than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, he had to face the course uh, of the cross. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, the cross uh, he bare was heavier than we can even conceive, uh, nor was the ignominy uh, of it lesser than the pain. Uh, but he endured the cross, despised the shame. Uh, he looked uh, to the joy that was set before him, uh, the joy of glorifying uh, his heavenly Father, the joy of delivering uh, a ruined world, the joy of being forever acknowledged, uh, author of our salvation and the pro prospect of having uh, all this uh, consummated. Uh, he uh, disregarded all his trials, his difficulties. Uh, he even belonged, uh, uh, longed to be baptized uh, with his bloody baptism uh, that he died out on Calvary's cross uh, of the pain and the suffering uh, out on Mount Calvary uh, until he could say uh, it uh, is finished. Uh, I came by to tell you and encourage the church. Uh, keep on running until you can say uh, it is finished. Uh, keep running until God calls you home uh, and gives you a crown uh, of righteousness. Uh, run on uh, while you're down here. Not for the man, but for the master. Allow me to drop this right here. Uh, Focus not on uh, what others are doing or what others are not doing. Uh, too often we get caught up on the petty stuff uh, and not on the pleasing stuff uh, under God. Well, he ain't doing it. God didn't call you to worry about what he doing. He called you to do what you're supposed to do. If you do your part, you'll get your reward. But if you're looking for somebody else to see what they're doing, you'll lose your reward because you just stop running and just start looking at other folks that are running in the race. Do you. Don't worry about doing them and you'll be all right. Right. Amen, somebody. Never stop. Never stop. Never stop, church, I came to tell you. Never stop serving the Lord. Never stop giving God your best. Not some days, but every day. And the reason why is because we are in a spiritual race to the end. We're in a spiritual race. And so, but, 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 but let us always take up an introspective look at ourselves. You, you, know, you, can't, you can't look at other folk. When I was a youngster, again, running track, I wasn't looking at the guy beside me. I, I wasn't looking at the guy trying to look back to see who was behind me. Because when you start looking back at things and you start looking back at people, you lose momentum. What was yesterday is yesterday. You can't go back and get yesterday. When you walked in them front doors today, 
you can't go back and get that little time then that you, when you walked in those doors. You got to focus and run right here, right now. Amen. You got to do that. We have to take an introspective look at ourselves and remember, if it were not for God, glory, hallelujah, if it were not for God, then you imagine how many people laid down last night that did not get up, but here you sit, here you sit able to say amen, preach, preacher, preach, go on, pastor, say a word, here you able to do that. And somebody else that used to get up and say, hey, man, preach, preach, preach. I'm going on. Thank you, sweet Jesus. God is good. They ain't here. Amen. So you raise the question, why did he keep me here? Because he's given us another chance to get it right, to get in the race, and to make some modifications from what we've done in our yesterday to make it right today. So you got to get in. You got to get in in order to win. See, when I think about what he did for me, and I don't know about you, but I just want to share this with you. I, when I think about what he did for me, even though I slip up, trip up, and whatnot, I can't stop running because I, I realize that he died for me. Y'all yeah, 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 didn't hear what I said. I said, he died for me. And, and truth be told, he died for you too. He died for all of humanity. But the question as I hasten to a close, I'm so happy to be able to say, the question for us today in all of our hearts and minds, uh, for us that are here, is this. Do you believe? Do you believe with all your heart that he died? I ain't talking about half-hearted. Do you believe that he died for you? Now think about you for a minute. Can I just call us to, just for a moment of just introspect? Think about you before Christ. All the stuff you did. All the stuff you said. All the places you went. All the stuff you thought. And he died. For us. Not, not the person sitting next to you. Not your, not 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 your rib. Not not for your your chunk or your hunk or whatever you want to call them, your bow, your boo or whatever. Not not for him. But he died for you. You believe that? Now you think about everything you've done since. You've been a child of God. We, we got any paramedics in here? Because I don't want y'all to faint in them chairs. I got a little lightheaded myself up here. But, but, but when you think about everything he's done for you, even since you've been a child of God, and he still has us here. And sometimes we go to thinking back and we get a headache. Oh, my head is hurting because we don't want to remember but he died. Praise God. He died that you and I might be able to run this race and to finish this course that he has set before us. He did it that we might be able to do it and to let us know that you can do this. You can, you can do this. You can do this. You can do, you can do this. That's the question now. You might be, church, you might be here today and you, you, you just might be going through some, some hard times because it's on the course. You, you might be going through some hard times. We, we look good. But you might be going through some stuff right now that's about to bust your brain. You, you might be going through some stuff right now where your blood pressure is doing this constantly. You might be going through some stuff right now to where you can't sleep, you don't have no appetite, or either the opposite, you, you, you sleep all the time and you eat everything you see. It, it could be just the opposite. But, but you may be going through some stuff right now. You, 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 you don't know. You may be going through some struggles. You may be going through some stresses. Uh, you, you may be in a straining place right now. You, you might be saying, I, I, what's the use? 
I might as well just give up. It seems like everything I do is, is against me. But, 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 but I, I, I want you to know that, 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 that I raised the question as the Hebrew writer encourages us to do. I'm, I'm about to hurry, y'all. Have you considered everything that Jesus went through? The passage in verse 3 says, consider him. When you compare your little stuff, y'all ain't looking good over there. When you compare your little stuff to what he went through, who was holy, who was divine, who, who had no sin, who offered up himself and came from the portals of glory. That you and I might be able to spend eternity to him. And you think about your little stuff. I ain't going this morning. You're not going to go worship him. Who went to the cross for you. You're not going to go for him. Because your foot hurt. You're not going to go for him because I'm tired. You might as well come. If you're going to sleep at home. You're better off being here going to sleep. So at least you can hear a word. The word might wake you up. Preach, Brooke. See, it's time out for playing. We might as well be real about this stuff. You don't come for him. Well, I'm going to get there. This ain't in my lesson. I'm going to get there a little late. Be late three times on your job. Sometime you get written up. Sometimes you get fired. And sometimes you just out there. But we want to sometimes like I, he did it all for us. Consider him. I got to get this money. I got to go to work. I know you got to go to work. But don't always put everything on I got to go to work. Consider him if he feeds if a sparrow falls he's attending his funeral let some of us die some of your own family members won't travel 50 miles to come to your funeral that ain't in my lesson but I'm saying that that when you consider him keep on running when you consider the stuff you go through and what he went through, you keep on running. Have you considered Jesus? I, I, I need you to understand and know, have you considered Jesus? I need to raise a few things for you as I close. Number two, have you considered how much he loves you? Romans uh, chapter 3, chapter 5 and verse number 8. Have you considered that Jesus knows all about your struggles. Hebrews 4 and 15. For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feel of our infirmities. But in all points was he tested just like we are yet without sin. Am I right about it somebody? Have you considered that he gives power to the faint according to Isaiah 40 and verse number 28. Uh, have you considered that he will never leave you nor will he ever forsake you. Hebrews 13 and 5. Have you considered uh, that he will, uh, have you considered that he will, uh, and he does uh, have all power given unto him in heaven uh, and in earth, Matthew 28 uh, and 18, uh, am I right about it, uh, have you considered that he uh, is more than able uh, to make a way out of no way when that seems like uh, it's impossible, uh, all things are possible with Jesus and through Jesus Christ, Luke 18 and 27, uh, have you considered that uh, he is a very present help uh, in time of need. Uh, Psalms 46 uh, and verse number one. Uh, I ain't got to wait on him to show up. Uh, he's already there whenever I need him. All I got to do is a song say, uh, just call him up. Uh, have you considered uh, that he died, that you and I might live? First John 4 and verse number nine. Uh, have you considered uh, that he is not willing uh, that any should perish, but that all men uh, should come unto repentance? 2 Peter 3. 
3 and verse number 9. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, have you considered uh, uh, being baptized uh, and being obedient uh, to the Holy Gospel writ uh, here today? Uh, I need to let you know uh, things uh, may be arrayed uh, uh, unto us uh, are pretty compared uh, to uh, the opposition that he faced. Uh, nothing can be compared to that uh, when we are confronted with her uh, harsh testings, uh, we are encouraged not to allow our circumstances uh, to overwhelm them uh, because we know uh, through the grace of God and his almighty uh, and his significant power that whatever we come up against that we are more than conquerors. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, we know beyond the shadow of, of a doubt uh, that when we walk with God, when we put our faith in God, when we trust God, when we continue to walk in faith uh, and not by sight, uh, we understand and know that whatever comes our way, that if God be for me, uh, who in the world can be against me, uh, I need us to understand and know uh, that he's right there. Not sometime, uh, but he's there all the time uh, and when you know uh, that this race uh, is not to the swift uh, but it's unto those of us uh, who have entered into the race uh, and is on this course uh, we can say come what will or may uh, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is uh, my shepherd uh, I shall not want uh, he maketh me to lie down uh, in green pastures uh, he restored my soul uh, when I know who the Lord is uh, I can say guess what uh, I'm going to finish uh, my course I came by to ask you, have you considered Jesus? Uh, look at what he did. Uh, look what he went through. Uh, he did it for you. He did it for me. Uh, we were unworthy. We were unfit. But now here he is uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ and our faith and obedience in him. He's added us to his church, uh, a holy church. Uh, a church is heaven bound, uh, hell proof. Uh, the devil can't do nothing with it. Uh, yes, we have some downs, uh, but we got more ups uh, than we have downs. Uh, yes, we see things uh, that will frustrate us uh, and cause us to stagger. But thanks be to God, uh, when we stagger, he's able to keep us from stumbling. Uh, he's able to guide. He's able to direct. Uh, he navigates the circumstances uh, of our lives uh, when we feel like we can't do it. Uh, he says, look at my word. I told you that you can do all things. Through Christ Jesus, uh, he tell us that when you're hungry, don't worry about food uh, on your table. Uh, I'm one that can fix a banquet meal uh, out of a desert. Uh, I can make a full feast uh, out of a few fish uh, and five loaves of bread. Uh, when you tell somebody, uh, I can't find my way, he says, I am uh, the way, the truth, uh, and the life. Uh, when you're going through a storm, he said, don't worry about the storm because all I got to do is say, hush, and the storm will stop. Uh, I'm the one uh, that can tell you that you can walk out on water and, and confuse and confound the minds uh, of men. Uh, I'm the one who call you out of darkness uh, into the marvelous light. Uh, I came by to tell you if you're not a child of God, uh, you ought to become a child of God and consider what he's done for you. Uh, he died on a Friday, uh, buried in a proud tomb, uh, rose on a Sunday, conquered death, hell, and the grave. Uh, you and I are able to sing glory, glory, glory. I don't care what man brings my way. My God is able. He's able to get Daniel out of the lion's den. He's able to take care of Shadrach, Meshach in a fiery furnace. He's able to wake Peter up out of prison. He's able to stabilize our souls and give us a fight and give us a faith and give us the strength to continue walking in the pathway of God if we'll just consider Jesus. Have you considered Jesus? Why am I going through this? It's all a part of your course, baby. But on your course, there's a requirement. Be faithful. When you walk away from God, you walk away from everything. You don't spite man. You spite God. And you spite yourself. I ain't got time for Jesus. If the Lord said for two minutes, I ain't got time for you, you they would come in here and find corpse. You and I cannot do this by ourselves. And the sad part about it is that many of us have tried and discovered we needed his help, but we go right back once we get on our feet and try to do it without him again. You can't make it without Jesus. Your stuff ain't so tough. 
church folk. You better be glad you got some church folk. We may not be all that you want us to be. But we, we're still under construction by God. And once you leave the construction site, and the safety man is no longer there, you may have some explosions. You may have to call Bishop Vic. Well, I investigated. I got to do a report. If they'd have just done it the way I said it, everything would have been all right. But he has to call on the same person that we have to call on. We call on Jesus. Jesus is my leaning post. I promise you, church, I don't mind telling you, he's my leaning post. Some days, some days, some days I'm like this. But I tell God, thank you, that he ain't moved. He's my leaning post that's holding me up. Every time I lean on him, he does this. He draws me closer and closer to the cross. He says, straighten up. I got this. And I got you too. Came by to tell you, if you're not a child of God, you need Jesus. You need him. You need him. He wants you too. Doesn't matter how bad, how far you want it. He wants you. He wants you. Some people don't want you. They've been used up. They've been abused. They did this in the past. They did that. They're doing, they doing this, that. Some people don't want you. No, 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 no. He wants you. He wants the drunk, the alcoholic. He wants the drug user, the drug abuser. He wants the loose living man. He wants the loose living woman. He wants those that are bisexual, trisexual. He wants all of them. We, we reject them. God says, come unto me all ye. You know what our problem is? Sometimes we don't answer his call. He's saying, come like the invitation. I ain't going to ask for no prayer. I don't want nobody to know what you're going through. We already know what you're going through. We see you're going through something. How do you see that? Because guess what? You ain't yourself. You've withdrawn. <laughs> And not only that, God sees it. And more importantly, you know it and he know it. How do I come to Jesus? I come believing that gospel. What is that gospel? That gospel is the best news you can ever get. Sammy, you got some good news this week. Mom G, y'all got some good news. I got some good news. Daughter, granddaughter, Papa G, she graduated. She, she's a lawyer. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Graduate, lawyer. Best news we, you could get. But I got some greater news. She got a degree, but she's also a child of God. Amen. But I got some better news than that. You, too, if you're here, can become a child of God. And if you fall short, which we all do, Amen. from the pulpit to the pew. Brother Murbrook, you mean you mess up? I cut my arm. I bleed. You bleed. You slap me on my left cheek. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to turn my right cheek and say hit that one too. I, he ain't done with me yet. I'm on a course. He's still working on me. I'm just being honest. I'm, I'm just being honest. And if we can ever just be real with ourselves and real with God, we'll find out that God needs, he doesn't need any of us, but he wants all of us. He wants us to come correct. There's nothing better than getting some sin off your chest. You feel better like, whew. I might fall down later on this evening, but right now, boy, I tell you, I'm walking with God right now. Boy, that's a, that's a blessing all by itself. I, I'm, not, I'm not preaching. I'm not preaching. I'm not teaching because I know we feel it. I'm not teaching no false doctrine about uh, continuing in sin that grace may abound. Paul says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the realities that oftentimes we get up as Christians. We fall down, but we get up and if you're here this morning you're not a child of God you need to hear that gospel that gospel is the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ if you're here this morning you need to understand that he died for you and I 
And to hear that, you need to believe that because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You must hear the word of God, not Brother Middlebrook's word, not some man's word. You must hear the unadulterated truth, the word of God. And that is that Jesus died for the sins of the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you hear, you believe that with all of your heart. According to the book of Hebrews eleven six, he that come to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. What are you seeking after? I'm seeking after running this course and considering Jesus that if he made it and he did it for me, I can make it. I can make it. You got to believe that Jesus is the son of God and do you believe that he died for you with all your heart? You have to turn from your ways to the ways of God. I am no longer trusting in myself to be self-sufficient. I'm trusting in the sufficiency of God to save my life, to turn my life around and to do what's best for my life. And when he does what's best for us, it ain't always good. It's not always like, man, it was some sweet cake. That was some good tea. Sometimes it tastes bitter and it tastes sour. But after you've walked with him for a while, it's like, oh, how sweet it is. You must repent. Luke 13, 3 and 5, I tell you next, if you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You must confess with your mouth what your heart believe. And that is, is that if we confess him before man, he'll confess us before his father, which is in heaven. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. If we deny him, he's going to deny us. And then we must be willing to be baptized. Baptized. What is it to be baptized? You must be submerged in the water. Regrave of baptism. Mark 16, 16 says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved jesus says that if you're baptized he'll save you and then what he does he adds you to the church he adds you he adds you you know how you want to be added on a list put my name on the list you know how y'all call put me on the list for sunday because we got so many people put me on the list add me to the list that 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 list is a list that, that 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 man writes but when god adds you to the church when the lord adds you to the church according to acts 247 Listen, I, your name never comes off that list, baby. Your name stays on that list. Get, so I had some of y'all say, Pastor, just put me on there for every week. I'm going to be there. I'll put you down for every week. But I don't know if you're going to be here. And I don't even know if I'm going to be here if the Lord say no. But when your name is added to the roll in heaven, when your name is added to the roll in heaven, your name is added, baby. I came by to tell you God, God, God has added you. And if you're here this morning, if you're here and you're going through some stuff or you've lost your way on the course, get back on the track. If you got some struggle, you don't have to struggle by yourself. You don't have to struggle by yourself. God is here to help you in any and every situation. Talk to God. Be honest with God. Be honest with yourself. Let go of all that other stuff and say, God, I surrender. I need you. I need, I need you. Yeah, I messed up. I messed up. Yeah, it hurts me to say I messed up, but it feels so good after it's all said and done. If you're here and you messed up, you need to just repent, repent. If you're here and you want prayer, just ask for prayer. The fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous avail much. A lot of us are existing today because people have prayed for us. I praise God when I talk to people. They say, Brother Middlebrook, have you you've been sick this year? I say, man, my church prayed for me. I have not been sick. I ain't even caught a cold. And I know that's because of the prayers of the saints. Are you sure that's why? I'm a big enough fool to believe it. I know it was the prayers of the saints. If you're here, whatever your need is, I'm going to ask you to stand where you are and make your request known unto God. You can stand where you are. Just stand where you are and make your request known. Good afternoon, Metro. Good afternoon. We've come to the offering part of service. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8 read, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good word. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this afternoon thankful, Father. Thankful for all that you do for us on a daily basis, Father. 
thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Father. We thank you, Father, for the many blessings that you have bestowed on us, Father. And as we give back a portion of those blessings, Father, we just ask you that you bless this offering abundantly, Father, every way that you see fit for the betterment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church. This is the communion we take for scripture reading. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Shall we pray? Father God, once again, humbly approach your throne of grace. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, giving you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. You are worthy to be praised. Blessed be thy name, and blessed be the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Father, we are so thankful for sending our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, to run that race for us, Father. Father, so that we all will be able to one day, through his trials and tribulations, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, Father, will be able, through his redeeming blood, to be able to one day sit at the heavens and take our seat, Father, in Christ Jesus. Father God, we just say thank you, Father. And Father, as we take an introspective look at ourselves, Father, we're just praying and asking that each and every one of us to be found worthy of his sacrifice. This is our prayer, and we pray in the mightiest name of them all, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, let the church say amen. amen. Now we may commune. First the bread. And now the blood. Has there anyone been overlooked? Not this concludes this part of the worship service. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we come to you this, um, this morning, uh, and we give thanks for your love and for your grace and for your mercy, Father, all of which abounds in our life. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us uh, this day to come together uh, and share another portion of your word. Father, we ask that you would just continue to watch over us, continue to protect us uh, until we meet again. Father, we ask these things and all things as humbly as we know how in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. And how the ransom singers will together lift that hymn, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. We're singing, oh, what joy when we get home yes we're gonna rest beneath that cloudless dawn and in that land where saints never die oh we're gonna sing hallelujah sing hallelujah by and by 